Hi, this is Jerry from BlackSoldierFlyBlog.com and I wanted to share with you a new little do-it-yourself Black Soldier Fly composter that I've been experimenting with. Um, I know it might look overly complicated as I am often accused of being, but I really don't see it that way. Um, well, I'll get into it and you can decide for yourself, uh, but what this unit allows me to do is to flood the unit when I want to, to drain it very well, makes it easy to clear any blockages in the drain. Uh, it has great ventilation, it does a great job of um, containing the larvae. The harvesting system has worked very well on some tests. But anyway, um, you know, it's there are some things I'm actually going to change already on this unit, um, including the uh, this the two elbows here for the harvest. I'm going to cut them so they're shorter so that this horizontal run is even shorter because um, if you get if you have a large crawl off a, a lot of larvae exiting the unit at one time that little dark horizontal space can in, um, result in a lot of them just wanting to stop there and create a blockage. Now in a little unit this size which is this is a Sterilite uh, storage box uh, don't know what they call it exactly but um, this is a six gallon or 23 liter size and um, this system will handle I think any crawl off that you'll get from there but um, for a larger unit I'm going to work on some modifications maybe larger plumbing and also as I said narrowing the range of the horizontal but well, let me um, let me start on the outside here this is of course where the larvae drop into it can be any container it can actually be uh, like as my concrete test unit here I've got just a bag velcroed uh, onto the exit that works fine a little trickier to empty and refill but uh, for this small unit that small capacity should be fine um, all right so let's start with the top the top is the same as the larger storage tote do-it-yourself composter that I've published recently um, this is using two identical lids because I screwed up enough of these boxes that I had extra lids but you could use anything on the top just to stop rain from pouring in there to stop um, well we have a lid on here in case you've got a pet dog or something that would stick his head in there it won't keep out raccoons or something like that or mice or lizards but um, it's a way to, to keep it pretty well ventilated without uh, uh, leaving the top completely exposed it's actually nice if you can leave the top exposed this this unit would do fairly well in the rain although you would have to run this pipe slightly up uh, like I did on the original bucket composter otherwise rainwater would drip in there so to continue um, I've got two pieces of uh, dry floral block styrofoam they're, they're velcroed on there um, that's just experimental I know they will lay in the styrofoam they, they actually it works great I've got three and five millimeter holes punched in in here and they, those are great for uh, black soldier fly females wanting to lay their eggs in there um, there's a lot of options with that of course cardboard you could you could fix on there um, but anyway that's just what I'm doing with this one okay let's look at this drain real quick uh, as you can see it's a perforate well cut slots into a one inch piece of thin wall PVC very very cheap I think it was a dollar eighty for ten feet, so very very cheap for the thin wall, and and that's fine. I think it's schedule two hundred, not schedule forty, so it's not designed for high pressure like you would have in a house. But this goes straight down. This is one inch. Then there's a ninety degree elbow that that uh, on the uh, reduces down to uh, three quarter inch. So then this three quarter inch, and I'll have pictures to to go into detail, but the three quarter inch uh, comes out in a watertight seal there and then this is uh, so this is a piece of three-quarter pipe and a piece of one inch diameter internal diameter vinyl tubing fits on that for the drain um, why do I have this complicated looking rerouting up back under the lid so they just um, it just reroutes from the bottom right straight into the top there uh, a few reasons for that uh, assuming that this isn't blocked with liquid that it's fairly well drained you've got oh and I should mention too that the the horizontal 
piece that would be in the center of this picture now, the three, three quarter inch pipe is also slotted like this stand pipe. That allows oxygen to get to the lower level. So by assuming this is open and not flooded, that allows air into the lower layers, which I think can be very good for promoting the anaerobic bacteria and minimizing the anaerobic bacteria. So we'll avoid some bad smells and uh, we're going to try and encourage anaero or aerobic conditions. Uh, the reason, there's a few reasons that I have it. Now this look, might look complicated, it's really very simple. This is just uh, a piece of a fitting cut. You could actually just take a 90 degree elbow and cut off part of the inside, uh, the end here that the pipe slides into. Use that little piece as the collar for the bottom. I just used a separate piece from, from a connector. Very, very simple. Doesn't have to be watertight, just has to hold that pipe in place. Again, more details will be available on our forum. So all that does is hold it so that it drops back into through the opening and into the unit. The purpose of that is we often get larvae exiting through the drain. That's fine, but with a situation like this, the only option will be to drop back into the unit so that then they can eventually go out the proper way. So one of the reasons that I have come up with this design is because you need to put something on the end of the drain if you're not going to permanently run it into the ground or something. So um, I want to keep it up high. That way I can, I can monitor the level of the fluids. Uh, but also, uh, besides rerouting the larvae into the unit, it's just a handy place to keep it. Um, as long as it's stuck on that piece of pipe, I know it's not going to leak anywhere, drip anywhere. Uh, so instead of putting a cap of some sort on there, I just stick it on there and that serves the function of allowing the larvae a re-entry point and also keep in the drain uh, elevated so that it doesn't drain out when I don't want it to. So that pretty much covers the top. The larva barrier, you know, it's on all of my units, pretty much my do-it-yourself units, uh, made with plastic devices. So it's just the hook side of the hook and loop tape. Uh, I've never seen a larva successfully just crawl across it. It breaks the surface tension from the moisture and they drop right back in. Which brings me to the single ramp on this unit. It might be wiser on a larger unit to have a ramp that collects larvae from both directions, but uh, I've run a couple tests using this uh, small container with the single ramp and both have been successful. In the first one I placed 250 mature larvae in, uh, I think it was a different unit but similar design, and within 24 hours, two, I think it was 243 had found their way out. This unit, yesterday afternoon, I placed 500 mature larvae and it hasn't been 24 hours yet but I've, I've ended the experiment. I, the last count, most of those were out this morning, a few more came out after the morning, but uh, I had uh, 465 uh, larvae had ended up collected in, in the uh, collection device here. So uh, a little more than 92 percent. Um, I might have had some mortalities. There's also some other variables. This was this, these are fine grade coir chips. I, I didn't rinse them or anything. I just threw them in there and flooded them. Uh, that could have stressed out some of the larvae. Uh, and uh, but I'm going to go with with 92% uh, in the first 24 hours as efficient enough. Uh, if something pupates in there, that's fine. If an adult emerges in the unit, that's not a tragedy. Uh, but uh, I also have a video which I'll. Uh, link to in the description of this video where you can see the larvae crawling off from that 500. You can see how the, the ramp functions. Very simple to construct ramp. Uh, the, the exit ramp or the exit plumbing here is also pretty straightforward. Um, you know it's not really all that challenging to do any of this. Maybe the hardest part is cutting the slots. I happen to have a compound miter saw, power saw. You could do that with a hand saw. I have established that the larvae can pass through the, this thickness, which was the thickness of the, my saw blade, uh, which I like. I like that they can travel back and forth in there. That helps keep the drain open. Uh, you know, I, I'm doing what I've been working with a lot lately this season is using, starting out with a lot of coir. So I put a lava rock in the bottom so that the uh, to keep the slots and the pipes from blocking with the coir, and then a layer of coir, and I'll start adding food from here. So. Um, I'm pretty uh, enthusiastic about the prospects for this little unit. I will post updates uh, periodically. Uh, visit our forum, blacksoldierflyblog.com forum.